provide you with the webinar. I'm Catherine Gilbert. I am the project manager for this effort. I'll be joined today by Dr. Louis Uccellini and our project's outreach team leads, John Gagan and Jim Steve King. And Jim is also our Nowitzki representative for this project. We are recording the webinar, so we have muted the phone. Uh, but we will provide you with contact information if you have questions or comments later, and we will also put the recording online, and Jim and John will let you know how to find that. Louie's going to start us off with some opening remarks, but he won't be able to stay through for the whole webinar, and then Jim and John will take it over from there. So thank you, Dr. Uccellini, for joining us. Okay, thank you. Um, delighted to be here. And um, first let me thank um, uh, Jim and John for, you know, not only leading this uh, webinar, but you know, playing such an important role in the overall project. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge and thank Steve Lord uh, for um, his activities uh, with respect to the Sandy Supplemental and um, getting that project stream online with respect to the Hill so we could actually move forward in this arena. So uh, let me make, and, and they have access to all the slides, right? And, and they'll be able to see them. So if we could just advance to the first slide. Who's doing that? OK, great. All right, so um, I only have four or five slides here that I'd like to go through. Uh, what I'd like to emphasize here uh, is that uh, when we see the regional um, representation on the uh, left-hand side of this, uh, this particular slide, uh, this effort started in the field. All right, so my first. Uh, uh, encounter with the with the blender was with uh, Central Region and specifically the Sullivan Forecast Office. I don't know if they are the first ones, but they were certainly the first ones to uh, promote uh, the blender um, as uh, as a tool that would help the forecasters uh, in the WFOs. Um, the uh, there was a number of issues that uh, were being addressed here, uh, and what I heard directly. Uh, from the folks out, out in the field as the blender gained popularity. First of all, there's this consistency aspect. Uh, try uh, uh, to you know blend across the boundaries of the WFOs themselves so that we wouldn't be building in these political boundaries into our final uh, NDFD uh, uh, grid sets. Uh, and this was, as it turns out, was an important complaint that was being levied against the, the Weather Service writ large. Um, I think everybody knows about that. It became particularly noticeable uh, through the NAPA report, which we have in the middle uh, of this diagram, uh, which recognized uh, our needs to, um, uh, to deal with consistency issues across the board. And they, and they pointed to the NDFD as, as one of the areas, not the only one. Um, we um, uh, then built this into the roadmap. And uh, with the idea that we would um, provide a national basis for the blender, not just individual uh, efforts across the uh, weather service. And, and there were several reasons for that. I believe from a scientific point of view, uh, I believe this very strongly, and I've said this in the past, uh, you, know, you, you, you really need to start large and then work into your local areas. Uh, this is what synoptic to mesoscale meteorology has uh, always been about. And rather than trying to build up this national map from cobbling together 122 different uh, WFO analysis. So it did provide a, a stronger basis for us moving forward in that regard. <clears throat> and this was um, sort of, this was definitely captured uh, by the, um, what was the name of that contract group that was uh, doing the survey? Uh, Riverside? Riverside. Uh, we went around and we're looking for uh, not only from a Sandy supplemental perspective, but also from a gap mitigation perspective. They uh, were providing input to NOAA on things we could do to sustain and improve our forecast product stream um, in the light of um, you know, a projected gap in our satellite coverage and the potential impact that might have on models. And out of all their recommendations, one of them popped up as the, you know, uh, provide a national blender uh, project. And uh, this was uh, around, this was soundly endorsed uh, by the Hill. And it was one of the reasons why the Sandy Supplemental money was directed towards this project. 
Now that's a double-edged sword, okay? Because it turns out that when we uh, we signed up for the Sandy supplemental money, uh, we also signed up for a project plan that reports back to the Hill. So the point I'm trying to make here is that yes, this project started in the field. It it got national attention. Um, it became embraced by the Hill for funding and as a national effort, uh, which is now being tracked by the Hill. So it's very important uh, that we continue to make progress on this, pro uh, on this uh, project and to, um, um, uh, you know, not, uh, we're not going to rush it. There's, there's a saying that I remember Doug Sargent, you know, many times, you know, you can't make wine before it's time. Um, so we're going through a stepwise procedure here in terms of collaboration, development, uh, and assessment uh, before uh, we would uh, roll this out. So, it, but just to let everybody know, uh, yes, we got funding for this. Uh, there's, a, there's a national plan, and uh, that's being tracked uh, by the Hill. So, um, getting into the um, uh, the science and technology aspect of it, and what was written up in our roadmap, uh, there were a couple of drivers for uh, attempting to um, what I would say provide this national basis rather than the individual efforts that we had that was going on. First of all, we wanted to have this consistency aspect uh, across the Weather Service, uh, both uh, within, you know, within the regional uh, and, and WFO field structure, but also uh, between that part of the field structure and the national center's field structure, because part of the consistency issue that was being brought forward uh, uh, involved what was coming from national centers and what was coming from regional offices like RFCs and what was coming from WFOs. Uh, at the same time, um, we would we believed that this would be a, 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 a useful collaboration tool amongst those field uh, structures as the um, um, as the blender was being developed and assessed. Um, the other goal here uh, is to take full utilization um, of the model output that we're actually providing. So uh, truth in advertising, when I had the Blender project briefed to me by the Sullivan uh, office, and it was, uh, you know, uh, I mean, they clearly, uh, I was impressive of what they were bringing to the table. Uh, but one of the things that I noted was that they weren't making use of our ensemble model output. So what we have is a situation where we're increasingly relying on the ensemble model output that we do have access to, but that was not finding its way into this digital product stream for probably the main reason is we didn't have the dissemination system to get the model output out to where you know, the, the, the um, uh, blenders were being developed and tested. Um, so let's take full advantage of the ensembles that we've uh, developed and implemented across this, this time frame that involves the SHREF, involves the, uh, the, the GEFS, the NAVES, and access to ensembles from other centers uh, like the European Center and uh, the UK Met. So this was another driver for bringing this in and, and um, uh, making sure that the blender itself, the blended products, made full utilization of the information that is, uh, that is there in the, um, um, in the ensembles and that it's reflected in our digital forecast uh, the same way that it's now being used uh, uh, to make other forecast products. And it's, um, so that's uh, one of the main challenges that I think we face uh, in moving forward. I should note that the European Center still has not decided whether they will allow us to use the, uh, uh, their uh, model output for this uh, product stream. Uh, the, the, I'm, not, I, I'm trying to measure the optimism. Uh, they were very optimistic six months ago. It did not get brought up in this uh, particular uh, executive meeting that they just had. They're having another one, I believe, uh, December. December. Yeah, and we'll see what happens there. But uh, from what I hear is that there are some countries that do not want um, to see this included, that uh, they feel that our product stream then would compete with 
uh, what their models are being used for in a more local sense. So um, we'll have to stay tuned for that, see what happens. Uh, the fact is, is that we have a lot of ensembles still to take advantage of, uh, not the least of which is the NAVES, uh, which involves Canada and us. Uh, so we at least have a multi-model ensemble in the medium range. And I believe, is the UK Met part of this, Steve? You just came back from the UK Met. Not first go around. Okay. So, so they are upgrading their systems, so eventually it may, it may go to Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, all those factors are sort of, you know, sort of swirling around like, you know, planets around the sun right now. Uh, and we'll just have to see how that, how that maps out. Um, the growing challenge is uh, on slide four is the consistency issue. And, um, I think everybody's heard the stories. Uh, I can tell you that our biggest fan in FEMA, Craig Fugate, has actually taken products down off of the morning briefing package that he felt did not make meteorological sense or that uh, there was uh, what he believed were inconsistencies amongst forecast offices. Uh, here's an example here where you have uh, a system that you know you can go into a blender mode and you get a more, you know, gradual transition, you don't get these, these, these first order discontinuities uh, in the product streams. It's those kind of uh, images that really turn people off to our products. And I know there are other things going on in the field, um, uh, uh, the rocks working in a collaborative way with uh, the local forecast offices, having these collaboration calls uh, to attempt to resolve these issues involving the national centers in those calls. So I believe the collaboration is, uh, is, um, is working in the field, uh, is developing very nicely. And uh, if we can bring the tools to the forecasters uh, that will allow them to focus on what's going on uh, it, you know, within their domains without violating meteorological principles like we have on the left-hand side here, uh, with, uh, like, like I said, first order discontinuities, then um, I think we'll be better off. Uh, so, on the, uh, the last slide, um, if we could go to the next slide, it takes a while. Okay, so what I, what, this is, um, you know, trying to give a, an overview in two bullets, sometimes doesn't do justice to a project. I understand this is a, a, a complicated project that involves the entire weather service, so, um, you know, just, just keep that in mind. So this, what is the National Blend Project? It is a recognition of the need to get the most out of the data we have, okay, and to use it to improve consistency in our products on a state, regional, and national scale. Um, I believe this is a scientifically sound approach uh, to extract consistent weather information from all the models, especially the ensembles. We've invested an incredible amount of money and effort in the ensembles. I'm proud to say that I, I believe the National Weather Service has led the way in multi-model ensembles across the entire spectrum uh, from the climate scale down to uh, now the uh, meso to local scale. Uh, we have to be able to extract the information from these model streams um, to make this work. What this is not, all right, and uh, I want to emphasize this, this is not a way to reduce NWS staff. Uh, this is a way, uh, this is not a way to remove the human completely from grid editing. But I'd rather see people focused on the meteorological aspects of grid editing than arguing over the boundary and who's going to blink first in the removal of, of a first order discontinuity uh, from, from the fields. So, uh, you know, where, where human resources are needed in this area, get, them, get it focused on, on where we get the most value out of it. And, and starting with the blender, a blended approach would certainly help us in that in that line. And and quite frankly, as we go further out in time, days uh, right now we're out to day seven officially. But let's say a, a year or two from now, we're out to day ten. All right. Um, clearly, we don't want uh, our our human resources uh, uh, dealing with boundary issues um, uh, between forecast offices at day seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, we should be able, to, you know, to see that accept it, uh, focus on the internals. If there are issues, do collaborative work, uh, knowing what you have on a national basis. 
and, and then work towards the impact-based decision support services that uh, we all <coughs> see uh, is, a, is our way to the future. So um, I think that's it. And, and oh, I've got a summary slide. So um, the other, the other, I guess the point here is uh, I, I want to thank the entire team. I understand that the um, uh, we still have a way to go in the assessment of this. Uh, we are doing a very careful assessment. I've also seen the uh, the collaboration and the and the cooperation amongst many components of the weather service. It's really been great to watch, and um, I'm wishing you all the best in, in moving this. Uh, entire enterprise forward. Thanks. Thank you, Louis. Jim and John, are you ready for us? Oh, I am ready. All right, so we'll turn it over to our outreach team now. Okay, thank you, Dr. Eucheline, for uh, giving us the background of how this project came about and is funded. Uh, my name is Jim Sebeking. I represent the National Weather Service Employees Organization. I'm a senior forecaster here at the WFO in St. Louis, Missouri and serve as the Central Region Chair for NWECO. Uh, I'd like to start by kind of giving you a brief overview of all the entities that are represented in this project. Um, they include the National Weather Service, of course, the Office of Science and Technology, the National Centers for Environmental Prediction, Office of Atmospheric Research, the Meteorological Development Laboratory, Strategic Planning and Policy Office, the Office of Climate, Water, and Weather Services. Uh, the project advisor is Stephen Lord, who's a senior scientist for the Advanced Weather and Climate Modeling for OST's Modeling and Observing Integration Branch. And the project manager is Kathy Gilbert, who just was speaking. And she's the branch chief of MDL's Statistics, Statistical Modeling Branch. The National Blend um, has become a massive undertaking, as Louis uh, alluded to. Uh, it involves more than 70 contributors now, and it continues to grow. Uh, several sub-teams perform the underlying heavy lifting or work of the project. They are the post-processing team, by, uh, led by Tom Hamill, the analysis and verification team, led by David Ruth, the testing and training team, led by Dave Novak and Jeff Craven, the dissemination team, led by Jack Settlemeyer and Kathy Gilbert. Uh, shortly after I became the representative on this project for NWECO, I became worried about how little information was being sent out to the field. So after speaking to Kathy and a few others on the project about my concern, I uh, volunteered to co-lead an outreach team for the project. Um, this was under one condition, though, and that was that uh, my co-lead would be John Gagan. Uh, for those of the, you that do not know John, John's a senior forecaster and branch steward at WFO Springfield. More importantly to this project, he is the team leader in Central Region for all things grid related and is one of the founding fathers uh, of this model blending initiative. Uh, his experience and expertise in these matters are invaluable and I'm thankful that John agreed to help me in this effort. Uh, John and I have formed a team of people that stretch across the regions that include forecasters just like you. We actually have one person from each region on this team. Uh, together, we hope to communicate with you, the forecasters in the field, on the progress of this project, how you can get involved and help shape the project, and of course, answer any questions that you may have. So what's the goal of the project? Well, it's to take be the best of all those regional efforts that are going on. Um, and develop a nationally consistent set of grids that will be used as guidance for you, the forecasters in the field. The exciting part of this project, especially if your office is already uh, producing a model blend, is number one, we'll finally be leveraging national computing power to produce the blend uh, rather than taxing our local systems. Number two, we'll be utilizing new model outputs such as ensembles, as Lou uh, alluded to. They're not just available at the regional and local levels. Um, and finally, three, instead of only using the best average of models to produce the blend, this project uses advanced techniques developed by modeling experts uh, to provide the very best blended guidance to the field. The project will be done in phases um, and as funding allows. The first phase will focus on providing deterministic grids as guidance for the extended forecast or days 
3 through 8. The later phases will extend to a full set of deterministic and probabilistic products uh, covering days 1 through 10. Um, we, just as the project is, will be focusing on phase 1 for this presentation. The first phase of the natural blend will, will utilize the deterministic GFS and European, um, the North American Ensemble Forecast System, which includes the ensembles of the GFS and the Canadian, and the European ensembles. In the future, the North American Ensemble Forecast System will be separated into its two distinct components, and that's the Global Ensemble Forecast System and the Canadian Meteorological Center's ensembles. And efforts will be made to include the deterministic versions of the Canadian UK MET models down the line. The gridded elements that are going to be produced in the first phase of this project will be three hourly temperature, max and min temperature, and three hourly grids for dew points, sky, and wind, and then finally the 12 hourly pop. Uh, these graphics on the right are before and after forecasts from the national blend. Um, in regard to the Arctic cold front that just surged across the country. The current plan is for the national blend to be produced and distributed twice per day. The raw blended output will go both to the WFOs and the Weather Prediction Center. WPC will provide oversight of the national blend to ensure meteorological and spatial consistency and these post-process grids will also be sent to the WFOs. So in the end, the WFO forecaster will have both sets of data, the raw blended guidance, and then the WPC added gridded guidance. So now I'll hand off the presentation to John Gagan, who will give an overview of the analysis, verification, evaluation, and training for this project. John? Hi, Jim. Can you hear me? I can. OK, great. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, if you could go ahead to the next slide, that would be great. Um, as Jim mentioned, I'm going to kind of go through a few of uh, the latest and greatest information we have from uh, some of our working groups that were listed before. Uh, the first being the uh, uh, information we have some uh, from the analysis and verification folks. And uh, we do have a website here uh, that's listed. Uh, if you don't have a chance to jot it down now, at the end of the presentation, we'll show you a, a Google Sites that you can go to uh, to obtain this link, as well as some additional information as well. Uh, so this site is actually one of the more useful tools that's come out of the project thus far. Uh, it's been created by uh, MDL, and any of us can go and can compare uh, individual components of the blend. Uh, you can view the latest prototype national blend and compare RTMA analysis. Uh, this page continues to evolve and it really does seem to have new features added every week and in fact uh, in creating this presentation there's even things we're adding to this presentation this morning so as we continue to go along with this project uh, the, you know, the information flow is going to be important and uh, as I mentioned before we're going to have a Google Sites that people can go to on a daily basis and we're going to try and have the latest and greatest up there as soon as we can and uh, certainly Jim and I encourage everyone to log into this site Basically, what you'll do is much like you would with uh, the NWS Insider. You'll use your NOAA username and password. That uh, that box will pop up. So use the uh, first name, dot last name, and then your password, and you can get right into this. Um, and you can see uh, what we have for you there. Uh, also, coming soon, you're going to have the ability to overlay some surface observations. Uh, and this is going to be important uh, to have everyone chip in and help evaluate the progress of of the RTM, RTMA improvement project, which is going to be a very, very integral part of this over the next several months. Um, also, uh, you'll see that uh, most of the information so far is going to be for uh, the, the continental United States. Uh, there is work being done on the Alaska domain. Um, the first uh, blended guidance is most likely going to be available around March, give or take. Uh, just depends on how the project goes. A lot of this stuff made by man, not blessed by God, so you, you, you can only go with the timelines you've got. Uh, so sometimes things get pushed back a little bit. So basically March, give or take, for adding some of the Alaska information. So if you could go to the next slide there, Jim. And we're going to you know, want to spend a little bit of time on this. I know this will probably take a little bit of time for this, this image to load up on, on people's screens, so I'll take just a second here. But one of the most important portions of this project right now is focusing on uh, the RTMA, or the real-time mesoscale analysis. 
And uh, this is going to be an area where we need some immediate feedback. And we've already started to see that coming from the field. But again, Jim and I wanted to make sure that everyone had access to this and would be able to, to view it and, and also give feedback as appropriate. Um, you know, concerted efforts being made now to improve the RTMA and also what's called the Unrestricted Mesoscale Analysis, or URMA. And uh, these analyses will evolve uh, to become the analysis of record, or AOR, and serve as the basis for verification going forward. And uh, while there has been increased interaction between the field and the RTMA URMA developers, um, it's definitely imperative uh, that we the field remains engaged in this and that we get that feedback to those developers to make sure that this is the best quality possible. Uh, and again, as I mentioned before, right now the viewer is going to focus on the continental U.S., uh, but the plans are to have Alaska added to this viewer uh, once the uh, unrestricted mesoscale analysis is complete current expectations looking at the next summer at this point. If you can go on there, Jim. All right, so it cannot be emphasized enough just how important the field feedback is. And this slide here will tell you how to get to that feedback. So again, there's the uh, website. Um, and uh, that, uh, that, again, will be listed at the end, also be listed um, uh, on our Google Sites. Uh, in addition, uh, if you look at the site and you see there's some issues that need to be tended to, you know, funnel that feedback uh, through your SUE. Um, also, uh, you can also subscribe or, or monitor uh, the list server. Uh, the list server, the AOR RTMA, which is Analysis of Record RTMA forum, at the uh, info list site on the screen, also known as the list server. And uh, you know, again. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of field feedback in this uh, with the RTMA and the URMA as we go forward. Um, so again, if you have great interest in this, get on that info list or list server and monitor the AOR and RTMA forum. Uh, and you know, certainly, if you have feedback, you know, send it to your SU uh, and, and get that feedback so that the SUs can then funnel it through their regional contacts and then and then up the chain. So go ahead to the next slide there, Jim. And the next slide we're going to deal with here is uh, part of the evaluation process. And this is the, the early expectations for evaluation. So going forward, you know, input, input from the field is going to be very, very important. So while we're looking at RTMA and analysis uh, of record and you know, the, the verification end of it as far as what our observation data set is, you know, as the project matures into the next year, there is going to be two evaluation periods. And the first is going to be internal to the testing and evaluation team uh, heading into this uh, next summer, summer of 2015. And then the second is slated to begin next fall with a, a few of the WFOs uh, out there. And then hopefully uh, after that evaluation period, a lot of this information, a lot of these grids will then be made available to all WFOs by the end of next year. If you could go to the next slide there, Jim. And from the training component of this, uh, listed on the screen here is uh, going to be some of the, the items that the, the training group is going to focus on. And this is going to be developed and provided through a combination of subject matter experts from the Blender project, as well as Comet numerical weather prediction experts. And at this time, training focus is going to be focused on an overview of the national blend, the components of the blend, verification, reliability, and then WPC procedures. Next slide there. So at the beginning of this presentation, Dr. Uccellini provided some great background on how this project was born uh, from the Sandy Supplemental, among other, other historical po uh, portions of this, and again, going back to the Sullivan office where this is kind of born. Uh, the scope of the project was finalized last December and MDL provided us uh, the website to view the initial National Blend product and so much more just a few short months ago. Um, there is an expectation to have the training and implementation plan finalized by March and to have the National Blend at your fingertips in GFE again by the end of December uh, 2015. So Jim, I will hand it back to you uh, to wrap it up. All right, thanks John. Um, so if you want to have uh, uh, contact with us with comments and questions, uh, we have two different ways that you can do it. Um, 
the first one would be to just use the email address there, national.blend.feedback at noaa.gov. And uh, this will be kind of a, just like a private way to ask a question. There's also more of a public way to ask a question if you think your question um, is a question that many people might have. Uh, jump on our Google site, um, which is listed there. And it's basically just National Blend. Um, it's a NOAA.gov uh, Google site. Just jump on there, and uh, there's there's a portion in there where you can actually, uh, it's a forum type setting where you can ask a question, and then we'll come in and answer it. And so then people can, can see it um, as you go along. Um, I would like to thank you for your attention today. Um, and again, we're not going to take questions here. Uh, a lot of the questions you might ask, um, we're not subject matter experts in it. Uh, we're just giving you an overview of the project. So we want to get your questions, but we want to go and get the correct answers uh, for them. Um, and I, I was going to try to show you the Google site. John, can you see the Google site? Not at this point, Jim. I can still see just the present. There it is. It's up there. Okay. So this is the National Blend um, Google site. And as John said, uh, you can see at the bottom here we have for questions and uh, on concerns, there's a discussion board that you can go to or uh, you can email us. Um, and it kind of has some of the information. And this video, this presentation will actually be uh, located on here as well. So that's pretty much all we have for today. I appreciate your attention, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. All right, thank you, Jim and John. This concludes today's webinar. So we will have the recording available, and Jim and John will have it posted on the Google site for anybody that may have been working shifts or something and missed it today.